Hello, everybody. Welcome back, Saints Nation. It's a wonderful Wednesday evening. We have uh, one game today. It's going to be Valorant Academy. It's going to be our St. Clair Saints taking on DePaul University. I'm your host, Theo. Today, I'm joined by Ari. We have an exciting matchup on our hands today. How are you feeling? Well, this is my first cast, so I'm feeling a little nervous, but luckily it's for a game that I, I love and I know. Um, and I also do know a bit about our academy team, too, so that helps, obviously. Um, I think today is going to be a pretty... Well, I've heard, anyway. It was supposed to... It's going to be a close game, yep. according to the players. So I am excited to see some, uh, some fun, close games and kind of just, yeah, see how things go. I think it's going to be fun. Without a doubt, it's going to be a lot of fun. We do have some uh, tiny audio issues. You can hear some maybe staticky uh, things. Unfortunately, there's nothing we could do about that, but we will continue on anyway. And, you know, as you said, it's going to be an exciting matchup today. Our Saints are 4-3, and three, and DePaul University are 3-4. and four, So heading in towards uh, the end of the season, the playoff time, it's going to be a very, very important matchup. We could take a look at the standing, standings. Our St. Clair Saints Academy are 4-2, and two, actually with uh, four points, and the Paul uh, JV Blue are three and three with three points. So uh, both teams trying to get maybe that second spot here. It's, it's Cumberland on top with that 6-0 record, but either of these teams could definitely pick up some points here and maybe try and get that second seed heading into playoffs. Definitely, definitely. Um, at least between the top four, it, it's pretty even. I, I think that it will mostly just come down to who, in this case, is better sort of drilled in the game, has better discipline, maybe more strats, you know, bigger strat book. Um, but I do think that Saints have a very, like, decent chance of, you know, maybe winning, maybe getting to top one or top two, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, our Saints did get off to a bit of a rough start early in the season. We could take a look at it, uh, starting off really rough, actually losing their first few games. But in the recent comings, four wins in a row now over their opponents have been on a little bit of a hot streak here. And that's definitely a big reason to why they put themselves in such a good position here in the late parts of the season. For sure. I think maybe... Um and then heading, let's take a look actually at uh, DePaul University's record. Let's see how they have fared up. A kind of win-loss, win-loss here and there. Uh, last time they lost to Cumberland, who are the best team in the league who we saw. But uh, they beat Akron 2-1 there and uh, have picked up some big, big victories, but also dropped a few games here and there. It looks like two FFs just straight up were most of their losses actually. So they're looking like a pretty strong team when they play. So... Definitely, definitely going to want to see what they have to show for today. Yeah, for sure. This is the most uh, punctual collegiate match. But, you know, a loss to the top team, it's not bad. I think I saw Cumberland had, like, six wins, yeah, six four losses. Well. So, yeah, not surprising. Yeah, I mean, it's not. Cumberland has been one, uh, definitely the strongest team in this division by far. So it's going to take, you know, a lot from these teams to really take that first seed. But... I think Saints, with a victory today, could secure themselves that second seed and coming to playoffs. If they can go on that little five-game win streak, they will definitely be looking to start off hot, maybe even get a bye in the first round. Yeah, we'll never know. I think today will be a good time for some uh, some win streaks, you know, <laughs> five-round win streaks. I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling a, uh, a sweep. I'm hoping for a sweep. Could be anything. You know, our varsity team. Uh, it's not too good with the pistols, but our, Aca our academy team, on the other hand, are pretty good with those pistols. And if they, if they can win those first early rounds, can set the tempo and get going. But with all that being said, we're going to throw it to a very, very quick break. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the first map of the series.
Welcome back, everybody. We are just about to get underway on the first map, Bind, St. Clair College Academy, taking on DePaul University. Let's take a look at the draft. I saw Storm hovering at ISO. I was about to mention that, but now, now he's hovering the deadlock, which um, it's a choice. I really, personally, I hope he doesn't lock that. I th okay, I think he's just trolling. I was going to say, uh, if they do go with ISO, I saw that in, chi in the China one, so the game in China, it was good. Um, DePaul University, their comp so far looking somewhat standard. Maybe not the Chet, though. I don't yeah. see Ashram Bind very much, so that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, nothing locked in for DePaul yet, other than the Rays, who's a pretty standard pick, a really good duelist. Killjoy also picked up for them, and it's going to be the Jets, so they're going for the dual-duelist uh, dual uh, setup alongside that Sky, and 
As you said, Astra, not really the smokes you usually see, so let's see what they do. And they're gonna go with that Astra. On the side of the Saints, they go for the Viper, Brimstone, Cypher, and it looks like Fade and Raze are gonna be the last two members. So, uh, kind of different team comps for both sides. The Paul, kind of the more aggressive comp, while Saints have a bit more utility to work with. Mm -hmm, I was gonna say, getting past Saints is gonna be very hard because they have both a Cypher and a Viper who kind of. You can substitute her first Sentinel if you really wanted to, so hopefully they make the good use of that double duelist comp because it's going to get very hard to get onto sites, I think. Yeah, without a doubt. And it's going to be Saints on the defense first, the Paul on the attack. So, as you said, Saints have such a strong uh, defensive sided uh, agent select here. So, if they can get off to a good start here, stack some rounds on top of one another and get off to a big lead, could it be a great start for them in the series. Totally. And another thing with uh, Paul's comp. I don't see a Killjoy very much. That Killjoy, Killjoy pick is interesting. Um, I am gonna. I'm wondering how that's gonna sort of fare in long term with uh, you know the Rays on on the side of Saint Clair, just because they have no no Viper to sort of act as that secondary stall. So I'm sort of I'm a bit worried for uh, when Tapal gets onto defense, just to see how they would. Uh, deal with that, deal with the barrage of utility. Without a doubt, and uh, you know, we see a Brimstone on one side and Astra on the other side, both a great smokes. What do you think is uh, better on this map? Personally, I think Brimstone is better on this map. Oh, we are in game, but yeah, I do think that Brimstone is better for this map just because of the uh, the length of his smokes. But to start things off, we are going to see a, a, a stack to A with Saints. They are not making contact, uh, but DePaul is um, faking. Kind of trying to get aggressive. Uh, Saints are going to respond. Storm gets that pick on a jet. Saints are congregating in showers, but I think they're planting B. Yeah, it was a great little start for the Saints. Getting a couple picks on that A site, but now have to rush their way over to that B site. They do with a 5v3 advantage, but this raise is going to find one, going to find a second, but Lakero is going to find that trade. So Saints still having the number advantage, 3v2 here, but do have to work kind of quickly with. The clock taken down, the spike is down. Jerry McCherry in a very dangerous position. He can find the swing here, should be able to find oh, one. Yeah, Dean is well. able to find Kalos now. Saints in a 3v1 scenario. Dean is gonna start that defuse half the spike. Great taking down the storm through the smoke. We'll be able to pick up that headshot. First round is gonna be over going over to the Saints. Man, that was that was intense. That was really fast. I didn't really all I could see was like the defense was pushing and the attack was pushing. Everyone was kind of just running, looking for fights. It was really fast, really aggressive, but Good on Saints to uh, sort of gain the upper hand, kind of close it out. Yeah, now they have that economy advantage. We're gonna see Dean picking up the Phantom, but what, what do you like to see in the second round? Do you like to see the Spectres or maybe the more heavy artillery with the Vandal and Phantoms? Just for the sake of economy, I would go with Spectres. <laughs> um, <laughs> seems like, yeah, DePaul's grooving up. They're probably gonna do something aggressive, so losing that Phantom is a big risk. But it looks like Commodus may take the first contact. Yeah, and it's going to be a slow start here for DePaul. They're going to be going up towards that B site yet again, but the spike is still going to be slowly making their way over to that A site. And, you know, Saints do have the weapon advantage. They're not going to play too aggressively here as the swing is going to come through from DePaul here. Let's see if Saints can find the early pickups here. Commodus just has to go around the corner and we'll be able to spot the enemies. Here comes to the swing. Commodus is going to be able to pick up one and they're going to be able to get out with their lives. The swing comes through yet again. But on the other side of the map, Dean's going to be able to find a couple down, picks, spike hey. down, and this should more than surely wrap up the round for the Saints. Oh yeah, definitely. This is this is wraps. Uh, <laughs> at this point, you just go for damage. Um, maybe some some chip damage with the Killjoy turret, you know? Place it right, but Spike is down, so they are going to have to peek into Dean, who has the Phantom. They don't know about the Phantom, but a double peek would be good. Oh, it looks like they got Spike after all. Yeah, yeah, they are still contacting Nice little wall bang oh. alongside Lakeru. They're gonna be able to find those kills, and the flawless run comes out from the Saints here. They're gonna jump out to a very, very hot start and take it to a lead. Not a bad run from Saints. Very clean, very quick. But I am hoping that DePaul kind of steps it up a little bit. You know, I was. Even matchup, that's what I was told. So, looks like they are gonna go for a mostly B hit with a Lord Sword Shower. That's pretty. Yeah, pretty standard. Right see, here. See how Saints react to that. Yeah, and it's gonna be more or less a full bot coming out from the Paul. They're gonna have one guardian on their side, but Saints three.
Spectre's a Stinger and a Phantom. This is definitely a round that DePaul needs to take. Otherwise, Saints are just going to be able to run away with this one on defense. VP is going to throw in the Boom Bot there alongside the Nade. Knows that a couple of members are in here. Care has to be careful. We'll throw that smoke down. That raised Nade won't find too much damage. A little bit of poke chip damage there. But Saints holding their ground with just these two members up in Hookah. It's going to be all on DePaul to quickly make their way over into B. But it looks like they're setting up for a teleport play maybe towards A. Saints are very, very ready for that one. Let's see if the Paul want to pull the trigger anywhere. We're seeing this guy dog getting taken out. The Karu and Wendos are going to be there in Hookah. It's going to be a full-on swing coming out from all members and trade as Potamus finds a couple of picks there. And it's going to be full side control for the Paul University as they look to get the plant down. Honestly, I'm I'm kind of surprised that worked for the Paul just because if you noticed earlier in the round, uh, some some members of Saints pushed up shower. They were getting all that information on oh they're not pushing shower. They're you know. There's nothing towards A, so... Oh, but Jet is gonna push up towards CT, get that pick on a Spectre. And... Saints are kind of at an impasse. I th think they're just opting to save their guns. Yeah, Viper's definitely saving. Maybe Storm goes for another pick here, but... I don't think anyone from DePaul is gonna run into them, so... Yeah, that should be the round going over to DePaul University. A nice little pinch on these sides from all yeah. angles. Storm will look for a kill, remaining. but will go down as well. And the Paul with that full buy will be able to find four kills to get the bomb exploded. Storm uh, Dean's gonna be able to survive with that Phantom, but a nice four for one, uh, four for one round for the side of the Paul as they make this a two-one game. I, d I really like that run from DePaul, you know, that even though Saints had all of that info, even though they were pushed up shower and they were seeing, oh, they're most likely going B. The DePaul's execute was, you know, kind of clean enough and, you know, not disjointed or anything. They were able to you know, get onto that site quickly, they were able to get their picks, get the plan down. It was very, very easy, very, um, yeah, just clean Valor, it was yeah. good. <laughs> Pretty textbook from DePaul, having that weapon advantage just got in there quickly, took the gunfights quickly, and were able to win the ones that mattered most, Jet finding that 3k. It's definitely a big reason for that, but we're underway in our fourth round. It's going to be a bit of a default push coming out from the DePaul University, the spike has been left behind. Four members going towards that B site, but... They're going to look to go a bit slowly as finally for the first time in this matchup. Both teams are on full buys, full weaponry and artillery going to come out from both sides. And it looks like the Paul University chooses to take the slower approach this time. Yeah, definitely. Um, breaks, Storm breaking their default with a kill onto uh, Sky. And they seem to be kind of pivoting towards B. But I, I think Saints have over-rotated actually to A. But yeah, Jet, they get a pick here. Yeah, gets one, dashes away. 10 health, hopefully they don't go for the reswing because that would not end well for them. And Raze is going to regroup. Yeah, they're going to be able to pick up that spike. Let's see, it looks like the Paul are going to be committing towards this B site. You can see Saints rotating over as well, but that fade is going to stay around that A site just in case the teleporters get popped. Let's see how the Paul is going to play this one. Look at the spray from the Kara. It's going to be able to find one as Dean finds a second through that smoke. As it's going to be great picks coming out from the Saints. Part of us here on 10 HP was one blood away from going down, and Saints should be able to lock this one down unless a miracle comes out from DePaul University. Only 22 seconds left. They have to get onto the side and get the plant down. Well, Kara's going to be able to find Potamus there, and it's going to be just as Astra on 50 HP. Going to TP over to that A site, but the fade is still here. Spectre in a beautiful position, and this should be an easy round win left. for the Saints here. As soon as he hears the spike going down, Spectre going to walk around here. Going to be able to find the Astra, and a beautiful defense from Saints as they take a 3-1 advantage. Yeah, good run from Saints. I did notice, <laughs> I mean, it has been three rounds, but so far I'm getting the impression that DePaul, they're more suited towards faster hits. You know, we saw in that round two, the Jet was just right dashing here. in and, you know, her teammates were, were able to sort of capitalize off that, but it seems like their default didn't really work out. Um, I know, sorry, the, I know there's Sky, um, I can't read the name, but um, they, they did die first. Uh, they kind of sort of right here. ruined the default, you and plus it was do. the info initiator, so it was kind of a tragic round, but we'll see how they can come back from it. Yeah, without a doubt, Sky going down first, especially in the default round, makes pushing into those sites so much harder, especially when you have the double duel instead of you won't have as much utility. You storm, takes, taken down to a low HP, but Spectre is going to find the first pick. Bottom is still going to find the trade there onto Storm, who very greedily yeah. went for yeah. that orb, but nice shots there for Potamus take him out uh, nonetheless, as it's going to be a four on four scenario here. Saints still pretty pretty solidly set up here on the defense as DePaul haven't really found too much uh, too much space here, but now they're going to look to walk yeah. through showers there. The shots coming through the wall there. Nobody going to be going down. Potamus walks up 
in a very dangerous position, does find one Balakero, able to find the trade there. Now it's a 3v3 scenario as the Astra throws down her smokes. That's a beautiful raise nade, will do a lot of damage to Balakero. Actually, he's able to survive there, not take too much poke as DP is going to be pushing through here on the raise. We'll have to find a crucial pick here with this Guardian. Let's see if you have any idea. And there's a Brimstone right in this corner. No, it does not, but what a beautiful shot from DP. Takes down Balakero, taking down to 21 HP, but the plant took up down here for DePaul University as they have the site wide open. That was kind of another chaotic round, another round where Sky, um, kind of died first. But Astra does get that pick onto Komodos, now it is up to Dean. He does get the first, is down to 28 HP, making that slow path through U-Haul. I'm not sure if the Paul knows, but they will be very ready, because I think it's a pretty good cross, no? Yeah, it's gonna be a hard one for Dean to win. Just looking for some pre-fires around these corners as soon as he walks a little bit too far around. It's gonna be the round going for the to towards the Paul University. And as you said, these kind of more chaotic rounds have been in their favor. And every time they kind of just throw everything at the wall, it's been sticking for them. So they make it a 3-2 game as they look to win a few more rounds on this offense. Yeah, I think to sort of win more rounds, DePaul haven't really been focusing a lot of their energy onto the, uh, the Cypher, you know? Uh, Yes, yeah, this sorry. Uh yeah, on Commodus. Commodus has been staying alive, kind of doing their job pretty easily. They're not seeing a lot of action, they're holding down those sites. It makes it easier for Saints to sort of get information. But it looks like they're going for a another like a a hit? Potential A hit? Raze is gonna send out that Roomba for the uh Yep, they're the preparing Astral. to take you all, yeah. Yeah. Astro, it's gonna be coming out. It's gonna be a full on rush here coming out from the ball. One will go down those specs. You're gonna be able to find a couple very early on as they're gonna be able to stay alive in this corner. Saints, beautiful start to this round, but Jeremy is gonna find one onto the care there. But Spectres being alive is just so much value here. The Astro wall also used by the Paul as it's gonna allow the Saints to get out with their lives with plants. Welcome down from Jeremy Jerry, but the uh, the Braze Nade will do so much damage there. Let's see if the Saints can find the retake. The Raze ult comes out. It's going to be able to find one from Storm there. A 4v2 now for the Saints. They should be able to make their way onto the site. Low HP on Jerry McJerry, who's on 1 HP. In this corner is Kalos. It's going to be able to find one. Will the trade come out? Yes, it will from Dean and Storm as Saints are able to pick up that round. and going to take a 4-2 lead. Very nice. I love that Spectre just My stayed sense. alive that round. That is kind of a weird compliment, but just by Spectre staying alive, putting that pressure onto DePaul. Oh, we know there's a guy back site. They, they don't have that full security of we have an open site to plant and they're constantly worried about, you know, yep. Spectre, back site and getting flanked. Perfect work, honestly good work from Saints. Yeah, very, very good work from Saints. And you know, they have this kind of defensive uh, minded uh, set up with their, with their agent uh, operator picks here. Uh, what do you think has, has been their best quality so far on this defense? For Saints? Yeah. They're very much, uh, they, they're very good at like working together, capitalizing off of each other, not just their own utility. Get I think out that's of my way. been a pretty influential factor as to, you know, when they can win rounds. Without a doubt, and it's gonna be Potamus popping the knives very, very early on here with the, on the jet, and it's looking like a bit of a save round here from uh, DePaul University, so this jet is gonna have to go absolutely massive with the knives. It's gonna be a full-on B hit coming out from DePaul University, and let's see how they decide to start this one off. Shots coming out from both teams, but Potamus now gonna look to enter here on this jet. Let's see a sky flash maybe come in here from DePaul to give a bit. It's gonna be a razor coming out as well. It's gonna be DePaul investing a lot here, but both of the duelists just go down instantly. Like here's gonna be one command. This finds the fourth. It's a flawless round for the Saints. Both duelists, you uh, ultimates used for the Paul University, but just couldn't find anything with those early, early entries. Honestly, unlucky for unlucky for DePaul, especially with that Rosa ult. But I did notice it was another round of Saints pushed up into A, and they just for free they, they got that information. No one's A, you know, get ready for a B hit, and it was right. So I do think maybe DePaul has to sort of. I feel like a fake would, would would serve them pretty well. I don't think they've tried to do that yet. Yeah, especially using the teleporters. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what minus four there's no mid, so. It could be something for the Paul to look into, but it looks like yet again, they're gonna go for that B push. Let's see if Commodus can find a gunfight here against a DP. There's gonna be a nice little brimstone smoke to stop that push pretty quickly I'm from Lakero. The Ritz Skyle is gonna come out, Molotov from Lakero is gonna slow down that push, but it's looking like a rush here from the Paul University. Killjoy ultimate is there as well. Let's see if they decide to drop that one down. Is 
a lot used from the Paul here to yes. make some space here onto this B side. The Killjoy ultimate will come down. Can the Saints get out of here with their lives? Comet is going to be able to find one onto Jeremy Jerry as the Brimstone ultimate should be able to destroy that Killjoy ultimate. There it goes. Lockdown destroyed. Saints still holding their ground. The push will come through from Potamus. The trade will come out though from Commodus as Saints still have a 4v3 situation. And now the TPs come through from the Paul University. I was honestly worried for uh, for Lakairu and Commodus um, there. Honestly, they, they it seemed like they were in the trenches, but Dean, he is going to get taken up by the Rays. The Rays just pushing up. DePaul are going to get an easy plant on A. But Storm comes in with a flank. A beautiful flank from Storm onto Cape Hacko. That's going to be a nice little start for this retake for the Saints. A nice nade as well from Storm. Will force that rotation. Spectre not able to spot out the enemy there. In position, but Storm gonna find that pick now. A 3v1 situation. The tap will come through. The swings will come through. A lot of damage from Kalos. So it's gonna be able to pick up one. Both will find the second, but the shorty from Storm on 21 HP will be able to find his third kill of the round and find the round for the Saints as they take a 6 2 lead. I really love the utility usage from Storm there. Uh, especially the, uh, the little satchel move, you know, where you satchel to the side and start spraying showers. That was really quick thinking. I like that. Again, another another example of you know capitalizing off of utility and just sort of understanding your role, understanding the assignment. And you know, we said before the game, Saints are really gonna have to be good on this defensive side oh, with uh, their awesome. agent uh, picks, and they are so far able to take a six to lead. They have the fall by DePaul University can't really afford much, so Saints gonna look to take this seventh round and really put themselves in the advantage. Unless, unless. Kepako pops off with that guardian, you know, the lone guardian with the classics. Like, I respect it. I respect it. It could be something to look forward to for DePaul here, but Saints are definitely going to be looking to take this one. They've been playing so, so well so far, but they're going to have to keep 100%. Pedal to the metal. Close this one out. Cal's going to pick up that ultimate orb. Uh, halfway to that Killjoy ultimate after using it last round. Very, very nice job from him. Nice shots from Lucero though, through the smoke. Just able to find that one onto DDP, and that's a great opening pick for the Saints, as that's one duelist from DePaul that immediately. Totally. I, that was a phantom gaming moment, you know? Sometimes it just gets spammed, but Spectre comes in with the flank, does get that pick onto Jerry McCherry, but they don't know Potamus has walked through U-Haul and is about to get a flank. Oh, oh they do know. <laughs> Yeah, Dean does know, spots out the pistol, will be able to find the shots, but Potamus actually will find the kill on to Dean, will be able to survive with there. his life, but the spike is down for the side of the Paul. You can see all four Saints are now stacked up on it, and now it's going to be very, very hard for the Paul to find anything Placing in this round. I'm noticing when it comes to the... Oh, but Storm is in the middle of the fight. Oh, and teammates just back them up. Yep, Komodos gets two. It was an easy win for the Saints. I am noticing when it comes to pushing Hookah, it's not always the most successful. I think it has worked before, but it's. Um, I, I did notice DePaul, they usually have more success when they push long. They could have also just pushed long during the um, during their eco, just because, you know, when you jump out of hookah, you're, you're vulnerable for those two seconds. So, yeah, you know, rush to the site, go crazy. You don't have to jump anywhere. But as I'm talking about B, it looks like they are going for another B hit. And I don't think Saints has, has changed their setup very much. They're still doing that uh, aggressive, just walking up, trying to get info themselves. Without a doubt. And they have that Astral to again, the Paul do. So let's see if they decide to throw that one down and get on to this site. But it's going to be Commodus actually walking up very, very far. He has any idea if Kalos are on the corner. Yes, he does. And he's going to pop that site for ultimate. Going to get all the information needed now as the Paul are going to look to walk into the site. But Saints know exactly where they are. Going to look for the wall bangs there. But Commodus standing still in that position, which gets taken down. Beautiful nade, though. Coming out from the Rays, the is going to be able to find one onto Jerry McJerry. The Rays ultimate comes out as well. We'll find a pick from Storm onto that jet. DP will find one onto Spectre, but Storm gets so deep into the side. We'll find one more. Now it's a 3v1 situation for the state. Storm going to go for that defuse. It's going to be all up to this Rays. Dean in a beautiful position. We'll be able to find DBP. A Saints pick up yet another round and take an E2 lead. Clean, clean. I love the retake from Saints. Everything was so... Like purposeful, you know. They everyone knew exactly what they were doing. It's just an easy win. I did notice DePaul when it comes to these, uh, you know, defending their plan. It, it, they do they do seem a little bit just um, disjointed, maybe. Like they're not. There are it's it's inconsistent. There are rounds when they they do capitalize off of each other, but then there are other rounds where they kind of just kind of get lost in the sauce and. You know, end up losing those holds, but we are going to see they're once again going for another B hit. 
And I don't think, yeah, so far Saints haven't had a, re a reason to change up their setup, you know? They, I, I feel like they're kind of reading to Paul like a book. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Brimstone Cypher for side of Saints doing so much work from this hookah, just last round, finding that first pick, getting that Cypher ult out, finding all the positions of the Paul University, that definitely put them into a frenzy. And it looks like they're giving a bit more respect here up this mid, but it's gonna be LaCare yet again up that mid, finding a pick onto Kalza Saints will have a man advantage to start off the round yet again, but looks like the Paul are gonna look to rush in here. There's gonna the flash, but it's gonna be dodged out. This jet is in a very good position. Saints have to be careful here. They are gonna be taking the TP, but DBP on this raise is making sure that nobody can come across here. The plant will get tapped there, but won't come out. Look at the swing they're coming out from Storm. You will be able to find one. Dean finds the trade though. Saints have a 4v3 advantage. Dean gonna throw out some Viper poison all across the map. And that's gonna land there in a beautiful position. But Potom is gonna be able to find a pick onto Dean. The trade comes out from Potom. Potom is gonna get shot in the back though. 2v2 situation here. As Saints are falling like flies. Jeremy Terry gonna be able to find one. The swing comes out from the carry and it's gonna be DePaul University able to take the third round. Kind of a bit of chaos, but it worked out for them this time. Yeah, I think Last that Astro Ball was really crucial. I was gonna talk about how um, it, it's hard for them to hold on to their plant or just to defend their plant because they don't have that, you know, that Viper, those Viper mollies or uh, any mollies actually, well, other than Killjoy, but you know, Killjoy's off lurking. I was gonna say how, you know, that may affect the uh, success of their holds, but they did manage to sort of scrape something together that round. Um, yeah, good for them. They did a good job. Yeah, I think that Astro ult mid round really threw Saints into a frenzy yeah. as they kind of just had to jump through that hookah position without any real knowledge of where anyone was and just could not work out for them. But it's going to be a default push coming out from DePaul. Storm actually has an operator here on this A site. Let's see if DVP decides to take this swing as soon as he does. We'll be taking down Spectre. Actually going to find Potamus on the other side of the map. And there's Storm picking up DVP. Two duelists falling yet again for DePaul University as they're going to have to push through again in a 3-5 situation. Yeah, and once again, it's just that... Oh, but I was going to say... Yeah, no, it's Sky going to ult out toward B. I was going to say, uh, Komodus was getting that free info There's again. Another. Nobody's coming B, but they, as I say that, they do start that B hit. But they don't, they don't see the camera. They're just... He's getting all of this information for free. Oh! Two picks from Kalos, though, beautiful shots, even you on that not. vision. The Killjoy ultimate will come out in the middle of the site, and Commodus in this position knows exactly where everyone is, but still will go down to k Paco as it's going to be DePaul, without any duelists, able to make their way into this B site. Now Saints going to have to find the 2v3 retake. Spectre going to pop that fade ultimate, make a lot of space for them. Dean going to look for the spray through the wall. They won't be able to find anything. A Spectre finds a pick onto Kalos here. The trade will come out, though. Spectre able to find one to Jay McJay. We'll have to find the fourth for the clutch, but it's gonna be K-Paco finding his third to find the clutch for the side of the Paul as it's an eight for a game. The Paul winning two Switching crucial sides. rounds towards the end there to make it a bit of a closer half. Wow, that's good on to Paul, really. I thought just because of you know how long that Stifer cam was up, that just that you know yeah. happening that was so crucial. I thought, oh, been. you know, yeah, I, I figured, oh, Saints are gonna win this round, and but uh, Komodo's got unlucky, just got hints to headshot, you know, as soon as he swung. But yeah, good from DePaul. They they seem to be sort of cleaning up these rounds. Hopefully, they can get another uh, another. You know, they can win this pistol round because if they do, they are going to get very back into this game. You know, six to eight, not a bad score. Yeah, I mean, we expect the Saints to be stronger in the defense, and they were. But those last few rounds, definitely a round that they will want back. They had the big advantages early but just could not close it out. Let's see if they can recuperate though and find some good shots here to start off their run. DP's gonna be able to find a pick onto one, but the trades will come out. Spectre's gonna be found one. Potomus takes down Spectre and Jerry McJerry gonna find so much damage and a kill with that pick there. As it's a 4v2 situation now for DePaul University. Saints gonna look to rotate over, but with the Killjoy utility here, it's gonna be so, so hard in the pistol round. I like the reader coming out from DePaul. They Immediately, they had two people rotating to his B, just expecting that, but Komodos is going to die to the Killjoy volley, and the Killjoy is going to get the last two kills to close up the round. Anyway, as I was saying, I like the uh, foresight from DePaul. They had two of their members rotate early, sort of catch that, uh, yeah, catch the rotate, sort of stop the Saints from planting. Um, if I was on the Saints, if I was in their position there, I probably wouldn't expect them to be up so soon either, so it worked out well for them. Great round from the Paul, and now they're going to be the one to start the defensive snowball. They're going to buy up four Spectres and a Frenzy still on Jerry McJerry Saints. 
It's gonna be just Dean buying a light shield and a sheriff. So gonna be all on Dean here to find some crucial picks on the Viper early on into the round. The flash will give a lot of information to the Paul. They know that all the Saints now are towards that A side, and the push will be coming through yet again. That's a great smoke from Astro. Let's see how Saints decide to play this one. Jeremy Jerry gonna find so much damage onto the raise there. DBP is gonna take a lot of damage as well on this side. The plant is coming down early. Commodore is gonna find a pick. Jamie Jerry, will the plant go down? Yes, it will. Let's see how Saints decide to play this post plan. Dean's gonna have to be alive here with this sheriff. That's a nice smoke coming up from him. Three members from Saints sitting down in that corner here. DBP is gonna be able to get across here with the Spectre. But the time is ticking for the Paul University. Commodus does have a shotgun here. Such a good position to have one in there. The shots come through the wall here from the Carol. We'll find some tags here on Tapotomus. Will be able to stay alive with his life. Let's see how he decides to play this one. A couple of trades coming out here and there. A shot missed there from Dean. He would want that one back for sure. Yet Another shot missed there. That's going to be Kepako coming out with a swing on the sky in Paul Barely going to be able to take this around. That was a good try from Saints. I I like the strat that they uh, that they you know decided to use with uh, grouping up towards short. You know, using their kind of combining their weaker powers together. Unfortunately, just because of Gundam, they did lose that round. But I I especially like the Brimstone utility usage that round. You know, I like me some Brimstone gaming. The, uh, the smokes were. I, I don't think I, I don't see that kind of smoke very often, but it did end up securing them a safe plant. So at least they got some plant money. Yeah, without a doubt, and they found three kills as well, which means a couple of members of the paw will have no real weapons. You can see a Bucky, a Ghost, and a Sheriff. So this round should be pretty much a lock for the Saints unless something goes terribly wrong. You can see they're going to be playing a bit more of a slower pace attack, leaving the spike behind as they want to take these long sight engagements where it looks like the Paul are respecting the fact that Saints have a full buy. Yeah, and I... Speaking of which, the Saints... Oh, I was going to say they had a, the wrong read. They did stack A, but as I say that, you know, they send people to rotate. Good read from Saints. I think they're just trying to contact up for now. Um... Maybe expecting something more aggressive from DePaul just because they're on eco, but they would guess wrong. But they do get, Storm does get that tag onto. Oh, but sorry, the raise on DePaul does get the headshot onto Dean, opening up the first pick of the round. And it's DePaul just finding the picks now on this defensive side. Saints just can't seem to get anything going for themselves, and you know they don't have the double duelist. They have that cipher alongside that viper. Only so much utility really to push through a storm is forced to sit back here on the raise and wait for the enemy raise to maybe make a misstep but DBP is playing so so patiently here in a dangerous position now. 30 seconds let's left. see, 30 seconds left. DBP finally gonna choose to push up a little bit and let's see who's gonna win this gunfight. Storm does find him and he's gonna be able to pick up that pick. Maybe a bit more patient from DBP there would have been crucial but Saints now 15 seconds left have to get onto the site. So much gonna be going on here in the back of the site but 30 seconds left. Picks coming up from all sides. Keep Hackle gonna be able to find the couple and Kalo picking up a couple as it's gonna be DePaul University yet again taking that round and that's three in a row for them now on the defense. Yeah I'm looking for Saints. I did not see what happened to Dean that round but you know losing the Viper early on it is kind of tragic. Um, I did like the util usage again mid-round just fr from the side of Saints you know I did see the fade tether they uh, it, it caught two I think um, even though they weren't able to win it out in the end. Um, still a good try you know. But now they should. Oh, no, they're on eco again. But I think they're going for another eco A hit like a few rounds ago. Yeah, I mean, they had a good, good opportunity last time they went for this eco A hit. Just couldn't find the shots. That's if they can get a similar type of setup, would be good for them. But Jerry McJerry in a very dangerous position. Look at that. Razel. It's going to be a trade, though, coming out from Storm. The buggies are coming prevalent on this A side. DBP is looking along the side with this. Anthem as, oh my goodness, Storm flies in out of nowhere. The trade comes out from the carry. Now it's a 3v3 situation. They yet again, Saints are going to be able to get that spike down. But oh my goodness, the Boombot's going to pick up a kill. DVP going to be able to find the second. It's going to be all up to Dean here with the Spectre. We'll find a tag, but won't find the second shot. DVP finding the third of the round as DePaul University take the fourth round in a row and they're able to tie Gone up this here. game. DVP really made a huge impact that round, you know. I think. Gone here. DePaul, you know, this, this is just the. Boombot count is another, you know, you, sometimes you don't even need to shoot at them. You can just have your Boombot run at them, act as a second player, you know. But yeah, great, great satchel movement as well from DBP there. Um, just to sort of counteract that Marshall. Overall, pretty clean hit. Um, 
Yeah, no, easy um, easy win for Nepal, but now everyone is going to be on that full buy. I think this is the first full buy like across the board that we've seen in a bit. Yeah, this half. Yeah. Sure. Um, I don't know. I, my money is on Saints, personally. <laughs> Let's see, they've been struggling here on the offense. They're gonna actually pick up an Outlaw as well on the side of Dean. And something we haven't seen so far this series, so let's see if he can get any value with that. Commodus, gonna see that Sky pick up that ultimate orb. And uh, he's gonna have to concede that Storm. Gonna look to push through here on this side of Fade. Well, for us, Mutility and Storm knows that there's someone in this corner. Let's see if there's gonna be any shots coming out here. At, at just destroying so much utility for the side of Saints here. The raised boomba will come out from side of the Paul. Nothing will be able to be caught there, but it looks like Saints are loading up for this A push. They don't have the spike with alongside them. Storm almost found the shot there, but Dean's gonna be able to find a pick there. Jay McJerry finds the trade though. Raise ultimate won't find much. DVP looking for something there. Won't be able to find it. It's, now it's a 4v4 situation. Both teams still pretty set up here. DVP in a beautiful position here on the race. They have no idea he's up there, but he looked away for just one second. A storm looked there. for the swing there. The smoke's come out. Lecaro's gonna be able to find one. Lecaro's gonna find the second. And Jerry McJerry takes out Comet. Storm I'm gonna run in here with the raise ultimate. The Brimstone ult coming out as well. Can he find the shot there? Spectre's gonna be able to find it. Now it's Saints in a 3 1 post plan. This round should be theirs. Oh, yeah, for sure. I really like that recovery from Saints. Even though DePaul had the read and they stacked the right site, they still managed through, you know, alt usage and uh, trading each other. They managed to, I think this uh, site had like four people on it, no? Yeah. So yeah, they managed to kind of br brute force their way through four players and it's really a testament to just how, how well uh, the team works together. Yeah, and Storm's gonna be able to pick up the kill onto Kalos there to give Saints a 9-8 lead around. They so much needed and they're gonna be able to afford yet another full buy, but Looks like on the side of the Paul, their jet Potamus just won't have enough for the weapon. Probably should be able to get one from one of their teammates. No, it looks like just a stinger is going to be picked up for the jet. And they might look for an ultimate orb early in this round for that jet to get those knives. If, and no, they're going to up to buy that vandal instead. As yet again, it's going to be a full on 5v5 full kits for both teams. Let's see who comes out ahead. Totally. You know what I'd love to see? I would love to see some Viper alerts. I don't know if that's happened yet, but I do. I, I do know a little bit about like how, you know how Bind just, uh, works, you know. And I also just love to see Viper alerts. But as I say that, you know, yeah, Viper is gonna die immediately on the lurk. That's unlucky. Um, looks like Saints are gonna go for a B hit, and this time DePaul had the wrong read. They did stack A, so if they hurry up, they should have a free site. They should, but the Killjoy, if there's going to be one person on the side, Killjoy is the, the agent you want for that. Kalos is going to be able to find a lot. And as you said, Viper lurking, not something you see too, too often as that Viper ult, uh, wall is so important for entries. But now without that Viper, it's going to be hard for the Saints to push in here. But they're going to go for it anyway. Raid's going to make their way onto the side. Kalos in this position on this Killjoy. He's going to find yet another pick onto Spectre here. The Saints are dropping like flies. Storm though is going to be able to pick up K Paco as the plant will come through for the Saints. Kalos has that Killjoy ultimate. Let's see if the shots come out from Storm. Almost found the headshot. Comfort is going to find one. Potom is going to find the trade. As Storm finds another. Going to look for the shot onto the third there. But it has to be careful. The Killjoy ultimate is taking down and it's going to be Storm just caught in it. 1v2 situation now for Lecaro on this Brimstone reveals their position. And let's see how decides to play this one. Kalos is going to find his their third kill of the round. It's the Paul University. Play the retake beautiful and take down yet another round. Huge impact from Killjoy. Three kills and the ult. That Killjoy was crucial. I think it honestly won them the round. Um, Saints, they did seem a little bit disjointed that round, but I honestly, I would be too if, if I was trying to, you know, shoot people and also, you know, try not to get detained by a Killjoy ult. So, Saints seem to be going for a sort of default this round. Uh, maybe a default, maybe a, a yeah, group towards A. From what I've seen, you know, the Saints A hits do seem to have more success, so we'll see. And it is an eco for them too, A is probably the, the better site to go on an eco. Yeah, I mean, we've seen each time they've been on this eco, they've gotten the plant down, and just getting the plant down could just maybe win you around here and there, because it forces the hand of the Paul University. Let's see how Saints will play this one. Jerry McCherry loves playing this close range on this Astro, will get hit by the raise and nade, but won't take too much damage. Just yet, as Kamaz is gonna be on the flank this time on that cipher. Saints can't really find too much as Potamus is gonna be on this flank on this jet, but looks like Saints are choosing to make their way over towards that B site. 
Totally, it's just a sort of slow in the round. Saints are going to be slow rotating over towards B. Which luckily is DePaul's weaker site. I don't think DePaul... Oh, wait, I don't think Storm is aware of the flank. Yeah, I don't think so, but let's see if Potamus can find anything. Surely we'll check this corner here. He's going to find the Storm and find that kill. A great start. Four times DePaul is... Oh my goodness, Saints just drop like flies. Cal's going to find a couple through that smoke. As Kate Paco finds one as well. They know Dean is up here with a share. They're just gonna push him, it's just a matter of time before he drops down here. It looks like a flawless round gonna be coming out for the side of DePaul University as for the first time in this map they're gonna be taking the lead. Wow, this game has really been something. I love how both teams are so like aware of each other. And maybe that's you know kind of the minimum for um, you know, for you know collegiate Valorant, for high level Valorant, but just kind of Seeing this close game, seeing the different strats that people, well, that the players are coming up with, it's it's entertaining. It's entertaining. It's it's like it makes you think, you know, what's going to happen next? Who's going to outplay each other? Who can sort of not just outplay each other, but also outbrain each other? Yeah, I mean, the Paul on this defensive side have really been turning it up a notch, and Saints just can't seem to find anything going. And you know, they they've won a lot. What, like five rounds? Five yeah. rounds to one on I this defensive so. side for the side of the Paul. So a very, very strong start for them. What do you want to see maybe from the Saints to turn things around here as they desperately need to? I want to see more fakes. I want to see more, you know, like misleading utility. Because so far we haven't seen a lot of that. We haven't seen a lot of, uh, not as many. We haven't seen as many mind games as we have, you know, uh, like physical, you know, 1v1s, gunfights. But... Adding that extra layer of, you know, making your enemies not being able to trust, uh, you know, sort of these indicators that you give, it, you know, it levels up the game a little bit. Yeah, without a doubt, I'd love to see, as you said, a fake from the Saints. Maybe throw in some utility at one side, use the teleporters, which are on this map for a reason, and maybe outplay your opponents that way. But it looks like our Saints are going to go for a bit of a default push this time that... The Cypher is going to be all on their lonesome, looking for something on the other side of the map. Apotomus is going to walk up here in a very dangerous position. Won't be able to find a kill though. A Storm picks Apotomus and should be the Saints just full on rushing into this A site at this point. Let's see the Fatal comes out. The is going to be able to find one. It's a beautiful start for the side of the Saints. And the plant will go down as they have a 5v3. Uh, I know exactly. Hold now. They're going to get that Cypher all down. They're going to know exactly where their opponents are. And this round should be more than a lock. But Paul have come back from where snares. Dean somehow ends up all the way across the map on that Viper. That Brimstone will throw out that. Nice job. Yes, Callus takes down Storm. 4v2 situation for the side of the Saints. Dean does get spotted out by that Killjoy turret. Callus is going to be able to find one. Dean's going to go down as well. Now it's a 2v2 situation randomly out of nowhere, but not a lot of time on the clock for DePaul to work with. Time is taking Callus on half HP. We'll go for that swing. We'll get taken down as DP is in the showers. No time for the defuse. Saints going to be able to take this one as the Karu takes down DP and finally Saints out of the timeout. Find a great attack and make this a 10-10 game. Nice. It's good that the timeout was beneficial for them. I think the word for that round was discipline, you know? Uh, when Potamus went to take that peak shower, maybe he was expecting that they would be more, you know, farther back. But, you know, regardless, when he swung, he saw two people, which, yeah, you know, good discipline. And even... Even in the middle of the round, after they had planted, you know, Commodus was sort of staying tucked back in U-Haul, not, you know, over-swinging, not over-committing, taking any fights they didn't need to. So I think that was, that sort of discipline and, like, restraint from Saints was really the reason they won that round. Without a doubt, I have to agree with you. And, uh, you know, once they get those number advantages, Saints are so, so good, but Potom is gonna give the ball instantly a man advantage. He's gonna find a second onto spike Dean there, and that is tragic for the side of the Saints. The spike is down, and... They're going to have to do a lot to win this round, so I'm going to throw out that Boomba, but the back away is going to be there. Bottom is making sure nobody can walk through here on this jet. Playing close corners with the Operator, very, very risky game, because he's going to go down. Komodo's going to find one, finds the raise as well, and Storm's going to be able to find Jerry and McJerry. The raise all comes out from... From Storm, he's gonna be able to find the trade onto DP. All of a sudden, it's a 2v2 situation. Kalos sprinting over here as Saints instead of are gonna go for that plant. I was, would love to see a teleport play there from them and get all the way to the other side. But now it's gonna be Spectre going down. It's gonna be Commodus stuck in the 1v2 situation. Has to pop the reload, but right around the corner is K Paco as DePaul University are gonna be able to pick up that 2v2 clutch.
I think that was more of a silly round. You know, sometimes you have you have high level strats and mind games, and sometimes you just kind of spray people with a phantom, and you, if you raise, you die midair, and you trade yourself with a rocket. That's honestly one of the benefits of raise. You can trade yourself, but ultimately, DePaul is going to win that out. Very. Uh, they did look more cohesive that round, so I am, you know, it is good that they managed to um, clean it up a little bit. It, the op is going to stay with Potamus, though. I think Saints should be more aware of it now. If I was, if I was them, I would sort of be playing around it, um, or try, try to, yeah, just try to predict where it goes, because um, it, it really it can change the course of the round. Yeah, and it's going to be Saints going for a fourth buy here, kind of, if they lose this one, they won't have any money for the upcoming round, so they need to take this one. Let's see how they decide to play this one. Dean gonna walk off pretty far. He has to be careful. Operator shot from Potipus, very, very close to in there, but will miss as Dean has the spike and has made his way so far up into the position. Will get the Viper roll down, but is that in the perfect spot? Will he be able to get that plan down and keep himself covered? Let's see how they decide to play this one. The spike is dropped from Dean. They want to get this plan down as soon as possible. Brimstone does have that ultimate as well. But the Saints playing a little bit too passive here as Lakero is going to fall down with that Brimstone ultimate. The trade does come out from Spectre, but Saints need to get this plan down and decide this Viper ult. That's an interesting Astro ult as it allows the Saints to get this plan down pretty freely. Dean should look for that one, but no, instead, they're going to ditch that Viper ultimate. They're going to make their way over towards that B site, but the Killjoy hasn't rotated over yet. A bit of a weird run here from the Saints as they look to come up clutch in the 3v3 here. So, honestly, yeah, and Kalos, I don't think they're going to... They, for, for now, they don't know. I don't think he's going to clear it. Yep, gets that pick onto Dean. Potamus is going to get that up shot onto Storm, and now it's just on Commodus in a 1v3 with a Marshall. It's not happening. Potamus will close out the run to get that 3k with the up. And that could be all she wrote. Saints Match are point. completely broke here. They're not going to be able to afford too much. See, Dean buying the outlaw. Actually going to opt out for the Sheriff. Spectre don't have anything. Gets that Bulldog. Comet is going to find the Guardian. Uh, Bulldog coming up from the carrier as well. And Storm going to be able to pick up a Stinger here. But on the other side of the fall, they're going to have all the fall buys. It's going to be a hard one for the Saints to win. Right, but, you know, if there was any time to thrifty, I think it's it's now. It's now. Oh, but they are aware of the op because they immediately just... Yeah. Oh, you haul Storm is going to go in on that satchel. Gets that easy pick onto Jerry McCherry. That's some raised movement. I Dean is going to get that plant down. And the Cypher all is going to come out. That Cypher all might be crucial, honestly, for the state of this round. Without a doubt. And that's going to be a great start for the Saints here. As you said, now's the time to find that Thrifty Commodus in a beautiful position here with the Guardian. As soon as he sees a head, should be able to take it off their shoulders. There it is. No, won't be able to find the headshot, but finds a couple of tags onto Potamus, who will get healed up to full HP by that sky. But still, the clock is taking for us to have the Paul Saints having this lockdown. Dean in a beautiful position has these Viper ult, uh, ready to throw them onto the side. DP going to find a couple with that ultimate and the AR. Does know that there's one behind him in the corner. Has great trigger discipline here from Storm. Beautiful trigger discipline from Storm. Gonna wow. be able to find one. Gonna be finding wow. the second. Gonna find the third. Storm with four kills on the round as he gives Saints their 11th round as they look to bring this game to overtime. Like I said before, discipline is the name of the game. I feel like most people would probably, you know, try to shoot when they see one, but to, to not shoot when you see three enemies and to be completely calm while doing it is like, yeah, that's pretty impressive. That That is the kind of plays that you need in a game that's, you know, 10 to 12. And just off of that win, I think Saints do have a chance. You know, they are buying up some, uh, you know, the rifles and the bulldogs. But it is pretty even, so I think they will have a good chance of winning this round. Yeah, I mean, that was a crucial round for the Saints, but they need one more to bring them to overtime. And now they definitely have the momentum off of the back of that 4K, but they're going to go for a default for here. Potmas watching Shars here with that operator. And nobody from Side Saints is going to be there. Nice nade coming up from DP, gonna stop that push a little bit. Dean gonna look for a spray it's through the wall there, but won't be able to find anything. I think the Saints take this TP here and just make their way onto this B site. Could be a very, very nice push from them. They're gonna find that Killjoy turret very, very early on, as it's four members from the Paul rotating over towards this A site. By now you can see a couple are dropping back as Saints haven't really made a way, their way onto A site, and the Paul are kind of reading them like a book. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't think their fake is working. Saints, they're kind of stuck. 
Lakaru is going to be that first blood of the run. Kapako gets that first blood, and just off of that, they are running back to A. But Jerry McJerry, he's aware. He knows he's about to, you know, smoke them off as fast as he can, or maybe just try to live. Yep, this exact is happening. They're just stopping it. DePaul are going to play retake. But Jerry McJerry is. I thought he was dead, but no, he, he does get that kill under Storm. Luckily, those Saints are going to get the plant down. DP 20, satchels in, does not find a kill. Double three satchel beaks. Finds Viper, Spectre dies in U-Haul, and DePaul somehow just, yeah, they get that round, they outplay Saints. Yeah, and that's gonna be the team A's coming up from DePaul, the Defender first map wins. coming up from DePaul, a very, very close map from both sides. A couple better plays from DePaul here and there, and they were able to close that one out, but a very entertaining map at that. Sure. Beautiful plays from both sides, single-handed plays, team plays. DePaul University, though, Gonna come out of top. You can see Storm did all he could there. 25 and 15 on that race, but Potamus on that jet was able to frag out a bit. And you could see how close it was. It wasn't like one team just ran over the other team, but in yeah. the end, the Paul University just found those clutch plays when they needed to most and were able to take the first map. Right. I'm honestly surprised that the Viper didn't. Ha I mean, obviously, Dean, he had a huge impact on the game, but just, you know, maybe not in terms of kills, but. The utility, the value he was getting out of his utility, combined with the Brimstone, was insane. I'm honestly surprised that, you know, DePaul managed to win, especially because they had solo Astra, you know, and, like, only Killjoy mollies. It's it's very impressive. Yeah, I mean, DePaul just found the kills when they needed to, which kind of propelled them uh, to the map. You can see on the defense, both teams had a bit of a, a big bit of a edge there, a Saints probably should have won the first half a bit more than 8-4 those last few rounds on that defensive side. Uh, they, I think they're going to look back at those and really want those back. But DePaul, in those rounds, kind of played perfect Valorant uh, in, the, in the scenarios they were in. We're able to close out that half 8-4 and then on defense just started off hot and continued that streak. Saints tried to pull up the comeback there in those last few rounds, but it just wasn't enough. Yeah, for sure. It was honestly just unlucky. Sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. But we are going to take it to a break. So when we come back, we are going to have your map too, so don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, everybody. We are in the draft of a game two. DePaul University was able to come out on top, 13-11 in map one, but now on the second map. We have split St. Clair College. This time going to be on the attack first, and DePaul Community University already talk us to the draft. First thing I'm noticing, the gecko. I have only seen a gecko on split a handful of times, but, you know, I, I, like, I like seeing new things. I like seeing new... You know, or not new, but like less common agent comps. I'm excited to see the value that that uh, that Depaul can get out of this agent, because I think some of his abilities, especially the uh, the ult, is like really good for this map. Without a doubt, and it looks like Depaul really like that double duelist setup. They're gonna be going for the raise and jet yet again, even on the split, and it's gonna be Saint Clair going for that cipher yet again. They're gonna go raise as their choice of duelist. Omen for smokes this time, and they're gonna have that sky for the flashes. Yeah, this time when it comes to the Astra, I'm it's it's kind of, in my opinion, my humble opinion, uh, it's kind of a better fit. Another instance of the uh, you know double smokes from the Saints and the double duelist from the Paul, which is fine actually. You know, if it's better to sort of lean into your strengths instead yep. of try to make something that doesn't work. But yeah, the Saints are gonna start us off with the mid take here. Yeah, they're gonna be looking to go in very very quickly and. To this heaven position, but Kalos in a beautiful position on this children won't be able to find a pick yet. As Commodore's gonna find the first pick of the round for the side of the Saints as they make their way on to this to be side by the shots coming up from the care. We'll find one. We'll be able to stay alive as well as Storm. And Commodore's gonna find a couple there, and it's a wow. flawless round for the Saints, just like that in the blink of an eye. They're able to take out the Paul University. <laughs> Not much else to say about that, you know. Quick, easy, flawless mid-take from Saints. I was worried at one point. Uh, I think Potamus was gonna have a flank because they didn't. Uh, they were sitting in the heaven smoke and they didn't, didn't get cleared. But you know, it didn't end up happening. Um, but yeah, overall, pretty Here. yeah, clean, Here. flawless Valorant from Saints. It looks like they're gonna be going for an A push this time. But the Paul have five stacked really that fine. B heaven position, so. Sinclair should, with relative ease, just be able to walk into the side and get this plant down and take yet again a 2 0 lead to start off the map. You can see Storm is going to be walking through here just wondering where are all of the enemies? Potamus will be in this position, but a beautiful blue bot will take him away from their Saints. Going to get the plant down, and you have to think for yourself the Paul University have no business getting the retake here, but they're going to try. It is a 5v5 retake, but with no weapons. Should be nearly impossible. Let's see how to do this one. Gecko gonna be able to use a bit of utility there, but a beautiful spray through from all the Saints. They're gonna find a couple picks early. There's the Cypher trip, so the flank won't even be too effective for the raids here. The Paul are looking for something, but not even find anything. Specs gonna find Jerry McJerry as a DVP. He's just gonna sit here, probably wait for someone to run away, maybe find an out tree frag there. As it looks like another round going to the Saints. Commodus will find the pick on to K Paco there, and it's gonna be. All of the Saints getting out with their lives. Let's see if DPP can find just one. The sky's on low HP, so we should be able to find that. And that's probably all that DPP will be able to find as the trade comes down. Saints find the second round with relative ease. Yeah, not, not a bad round from DePaul, even though they were on that weapon deficit. You might think, you know, stacking mid. Maybe they're, you might think at first, oh, they're patrolling a little bit. But, you know, you can't really blame them. Yeah. Yeah. There's not much they can do at that point. You know, if they didn't even get so much as, you know, a kill in the round before, so much they can do, but they are going to start off this round with their first full buy. Most of them have light shields, which is interesting. I don't know how much that's going to affect the, uh, you know, the outcome of their gunfights, just because everyone aims for the head anyways, but we are going to see if Saints can sort of adapt, since they are on a little bit of a weaker buy. And Dean's going to be buying that Operator on the Viper. That is, that is ambitious to say the least in this third round, but let's see how the Saints decide to play it here. Uh, Dean's going to be sitting on that B site and just holding that one down with the operator, but nobody from the side of the University is going to push through there. And his DVP is going to find the early spike frag off Commodus, and that's the spike down all on the lonesome. Commodus is going to drop down. Storm's going to find a beautiful timing there, but I have to be careful from that nade. Oh, that's going to be a lot of damage. Getting down. Storm's going to live on 30 HP, but the spike being down for St. Clair College will make this round so hard to win. That was a beautiful nade, honestly. That was great. Saints, they seem kind of at a... Yeah, they're just slowing it down a little bit. They are going to end A, but I think, yeah, DePaul knows. Kabako just holding that. Expecting that. Oh, but it, supported by DBP. Does get that pick onto Storm. Dean's just watching over mid, but 
He doesn't know, there's really no one there. And DP is just hunting for more kills, but is gonna get punished by Spectre. And Dean does end up finding a kill in with that off. That's great picks, but Dean will go down with that off there. And K Paco gonna, gonna find the flank, will find a nice. couple of beautiful shots onto Spectre and Lakara there. And Saints gonna be dropping that one. And you must think to yourself, how is their economy looking like now? They opted to go for that kind of aggressive over by there on that third round. Not something you see too often as now. Only a couple of members of their team will be able to get those full weapons. And on the flip side, the fall now have an operator for themselves on their jet alongside a full buy for the rest of the team. Yeah, and you just off of the op. I mean, I guess you could say the judge is kind of a counter, but it is going to be very hard to get around. Especially with the you know majority of your team having light shield and you know one guy has a stinger. Komodos is going to start by just holding that B flank. The Saints are running it a bit again, but does get punished by Potamus with the op. Is going to be able to get out, you know, get that pick and get out. Just talk about the cipher cam, but no big deal, you know. Oh, but meanwhile on A, DPP does find that pick onto Dean. He's kind of effectively shutting down that Viper lurk and. Really, really limiting Saints' uh, options for this round. Yeah, without a doubt, Saints now don't have their Duelist, don't have their Viper. It's going to be so, so hard to push in 20 sites here. And, you know, look here with that Operator uh, Palmas, it's just going to be holding down uh, basically a sight line all behind their low zones. But it looks like Saints are going to make up their mind and make their way over towards that A site through mid. But side of DePaul, have a couple members to defend this one, K Paco. It's gonna be the first one here, as he knows the Cypher Trip will come out. Get him, get him. The utility will find the swing, finds one, trade does come out wow. from Spectre, who finds a couple of kills. Actually, and now Saints can make their way onto this A-side very, very quickly. Should be able to get the spike down, but they're playing just a little bit too passive here, as the Paul are gonna get a chance to rotate over here. Kalos does make up some space here, but finally Saints left. are gonna get onto the uh, site and get the spike down to 3v2. Totally, and this is still very much doable for DePaul University. Honestly, I think those two, those two kills for, uh, for Spectre were, were a little bit lucky, you know, the phantom headshots on the rope, but DePaul are going to start that pathing, make it on to into heaven. So far, Spectre hasn't been cleared, but this is a very good angle. I feel like they're good for at least one here. Uh, it was a great angle from Spectre, but Potamus hitting the flank alongside. Ah. Me, Spectre gonna actually find one from I've that position on Scout. There's the Sky Ultimate coming out, and Sane's gonna look to pick this round up. Spectre still in this corner, gonna look for the shots, but the time is ticking for the Paul University. They kind of have to go quickly here. The shots yeah, coming out from Potamus, we're gonna find one. Well, Akira finds remaining. the trade. Let's see who's gonna win this 1v1, but there's no time for the nice. defuse as Lakaru finds the kill, and Saints in a 3v5 situation oh. with nobody. Uh, with no real hope, able to pick up that round and take a 3-1 lead on this map. That was really impressive. I think, honestly, that one came down to the uh, positioning, especially from Lakairu and Spectre there at the end. It's, uh, the hell angles, it's kind of... Uh, obviously, it's good to clear every angle, but sometimes you just, you just don't expect people to be playing in certain yeah. spots. Sometimes you think they're gonna be, you know, grouped up, and... Yeah, especially if it's like a 2v3, you would expect the, you know, the last two marine players to be grouped up here. But, looks like Saints are gonna start it off with a B hit. And, or maybe a mid hit instead. Yeah, I think they like this mid to B push, and they're gonna be looking for it. They do have the weapon benches, but the Paul, I believe, are on a save round, so let's see how the Saints side to play this one. They're gonna go rush into this B, having position. Storm's gonna find a lot of value with his utility here. Jerry McFerry has to be careful here, though. The trade will come out for Kalos, and two for two trade so far. Saints, though, still making up a lot of space here onto this B side. Spectre's gonna walk into that smoke, we'll be able to find one. The plant will come out from Dean, and the 3v2 situation with the weapons advantage. Saints. Should be able to clean this one up. Let's see how the retake comes out. Beautiful shot there from Dean. Able to find a couple headshots to close out the round. The Saints are going to take a 4 1 lead in this map. Not bad at all. Very nice. Uh, very nice round. Very just clean B hit, you know? Very much um, another example of Saints just working off of each other. Kind of. Yeah, I don't know. Just trying to. Like, even the, not even the skills, but like tip the skills. Yeah, tip the skills in their favor this round. I think it's pretty crucial. It was definitely, yeah, 4 1. Very much not a bad score at all. The adjustment from DePaul isn't bad either. You know, they're putting more of that attention towards mid. I think they're 2 in heaven. And Jet is going to start by, oh, never mind. <laughs> Jet is going to start by watching the game. And it looks like Storm has been double satcheling very aggressively on this attack set, but just hasn't been punished from the side of the Paul University. As it's gonna get in a beautiful position here. DBP though wants to drop down so badly in 
to this position. Storm though will make his way up. The toes are gonna get shot. That raise nade is gonna be so so dangerous. You can see Storm oh, trying to no. stay alive on top of that box. Spectre trying to heal him up, but he gonna find a couple kills early in the Viper World coming out as well for the side of a St. Clair College. They're investing a lot into this one, but it's not going to be fine. Anything Dean, though, on the push, getting that entry pick for the side of the Saints Cape Hacko, though, will slow down that push very, very quickly. And all three members of the Saints stuck in here. You see that ultimate comes out for Cape Hacko. Doesn't find anything, but Kalos going to be able to find one Spectre. Finds a trade to both Hamas. As they don't know the Kalos in this corner, they're going to be able to find a second, but Lakara finds a trade. But on 28 HP in the 1v2 situation, it's going to be so, so hard. Yes, but Jeremy Cherry is the perfect position to give the their second round. Yeah, that impact from DBP was. was yeah, that, that was the reason they won the round. That was crucial. I love the positioning. The fact that you can even, you know, see like the little sliver of their foot. It's, it really seems kind of unfair. And plus the nade to sort of um, secure the damage or the damage and eventually the kill. It was really, it was the reason. It was the, sw um, the catalyst basically for the round win. I did also notice... Um, these vents hit from Saints aren't always very successful. I think they have to find ways to, uh, not, um, yeah, not avoid it, but improve it. And, it, you know, if we're lucky, they might just try it again. <laughs> Maybe they're listening to me. They're going to try to get another vent hit in. Maybe Dean all on their lonesome here on this A side on the Viper. Will get taken down pretty low HP, but will be able to stay alive. Storm only has the judge here on that raise but we'll have to sit in this corner for quite a while. Let's see what Potamus can get done with this. Alcal as well as DP. He's gonna find, we're gonna find the nice. second. Beautiful positioning from DP there, and it does find a couple kills there. Has the ultimate, has the nade back up. As Saints, gonna look to rotate over towards that A side. Common is just gonna sprint through here, but does get spot up in Cape Hacko. That's the spike down, Dean. Yes, he is on this side as the Viper, but how much can he find Storm? We'll look for something, but the Outlaw actually gonna take him down there. Now in the 1v5 scenario, Cape Hacko will find a nice little flick there onto Dean as the flawless round comes out from DePaul University. DePaul are looking really, really good on split. I think they just, and you know, from my observation, they, they seem more more comfortable on this map than they did on Bind. They seem more, you know, like Saints was last map, they seem more disciplined, they seem kind of more, uh, more confident and just, like, they're trusting of themselves and, um, you know, like, what they can, yeah, they're, of themselves and their abilities, you know, kind of just working together, getting that team gameplay in, but it seems like they would have the right read. Komodos is going to open it up with that pick onto Potamos with a little bit of the, the uh, you know, uh, ambitious swing. That's going to be leading in their death. And now they're going to make their way onto the site, but the spike is all the way on A, eh, though, and in the spawn, so yes, Saints make up a lot of ground here, but what can they really get down here? You can definitely think, the Paul are definitely thinking all oh, the plants going down here. Are we going to retake here? But it's going to be Saints using that Omen teleport actually to pick that one up. Beautiful play by them. The plants will go down as the Paul are in a very, very tough scenario here. Now 4v5, going to look for this retake. The shots comes out here from Spectre. He's almost able to find a kill there, but Kalos is able to stay alive on 70 HP. DVP on a huge flank here. Has that raise ultimate. Storm's going to find another one to Jerry McCherry. That should be a great kill for the side of the Saints now. As pushing through should be nearly impossible. Here, Commerce going to find one more DP. Does get caught out on the flank. It's going to be a flawless round right back at the Paul University of St. Clair. Take a 5-3 lead. Yeah, we, we have a game on our hands. Just when I, uh, you know, one round, I, I compliment to Paul on how, you know, how, like, cohesive they are in the next round. I'm, I'm doing the same for the Saints. This, just flawless rounds back to back. Both of these teams, I think this is a really, really good matchup. Honestly, very entertaining. Um, just from the amount of Saints games that I've seen, not all of them are, very, are, are this close. Usually they're more one-sided, so this is very much a, uh, I guess, um, yeah, I don't know, just good fun. Just very <laughs> enriching. Um, yeah, spend your time playing Valorant. Again, another mid hit, quick dog up mid. And Storm is going to find that opening pick onto Jeremy Cherry. Yeah, he will. And Potamus will have to go crazy here with this operator. Has to hold this angle. But Spectre going to find a second here. The raise ultimate does come out, though, on the flank from DP. He's going to be able to find Lucero, but Potamus gives up that having position. And Saints are going to make up a lot of space here. They're going to go with a raise ultimate of their own as Dean finds DPP. Nice shot from Storm there. Takes down Potamus as well. As the 
push comes through, but K Paco is able to find up that kill, but it's still 1v3 situation. As you can see, the Saints choose to go for the safer option, rotate it over to A, get that plant down, and secure this round for themselves. Yeah, not a bad decision at all. But it looks like the Gecko is gonna is reading the rotate, and he's already in screens, but luckily Spectre is gonna come in with that flash and kind of confirm their location. And yeah, this is Raps. Just gonna run, yeah, just running away, saving, trying to get out with their life and uh, going for the next run. Yeah, I mean, a great round again from Sinclair, and they're definitely picked it up on this attacking side. Last map, just couldn't seem to get anything going for themselves, but this map just kind of dismantling DePaul University. As you know, as we said, Kipaku gonna save this one, Sinclair gonna take a 6-3 lead, and, you know, they're looking so, so good on this attack. And, uh, you know, we're gonna have to see how they play the defense, obviously. Yeah. They can't get too ahead of themselves. They were up big in the first half last map and couldn't close it out, so... The Saints gonna have to keep up the aggression momentum here to really close this half out strong. Totally, and even though they are up six to three right now, I oh, are they gonna run into the up? Maybe. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's a kill on the Spectre. I, <laughs> um, just the fact that uh, DePaul ended up saving that up, it's. I feel like that's. Um, it, it gives them a good shot of uh, tying up the half. You know, if they win this round. Obviously, the op is going to help him with that. Four to six, you know, obviously with the eco boost that that gives, it makes it very easy to get it to a six to six by the end of the half. But that also depends on how Saints choose to uh, respond. And as I say that, I thought, um, you know, everyone on DePaul is going to fall by, but no, they're going to be on an eco. So we are going to see, maybe, it, it might just be up to Potamus to change the state of this round. Yeah, without a doubt. And it's going to be DVP only affording that Sheriff on the defensive side. Not what you want to see. K Paco as well only has that sheriff. If he can find an early pick here onto this Viper. Who has their knife out? Oh, I'm not going to be able to find it though. The headshot comes out from Dean onto K Paco when the kill will come through. And you can see just the Paul don't have the weaponry to contest St. Clair. It's going to be a three for one trade to start off the round. Storm though will go down very, very early on here to Potamus, but the plant will be going down as well. The retake should be. Very, very hard here from the side of the Paul. It's just Potamus with this Operator and DBP on the flank with this Sheriff. Let's see if Potamus can go crazy here. does have those knives. Let's see the side to pop them. The Sky Ultimate comes out to give away the position of a couple members from the Paul here. And that should be all she wrote. Let's see how Saints play this one. Combat is in a dangerous position here. Will still be alive and just has, just has to play his life. Throws out his camera there. DVP going to fly in here alongside Potamus. As they're not going to check that corner. Potamus is going to find one. Combat finds the trade, but one HP on this jet. That's going to be all she wrote to St. Clair. Take a 7-3 lead. Mm -hmm. Very good work from Saints. There, I, I can I can see it in their gameplay. They're they're starting to get a little more confident, and I don't blame them. You know, if you get enough momentum, so far they have three rounds in a row. Three rounds in a row is not bad. It's really it's good to sort of cushion your economy, and also um, it's kind of the start. It could be the start of a uh, a win streak for Saints, and you know, yeah, they're just on a full buy again. Their money is good. I would be so relaxed going into this round because, you know, even if they do, if even if DePaul brings it to 7-5, um, yeah, seven rounds on a tax play is really good. Oh, but it's going to be a great wow. start for the side of DePaul. They're going to find down. three picks hey. instantly on St. Clair dropping like flies. Let's see if Jerry McCherry can find something in mid. It's going to be actually Comet is picking that one up on the Cypher. And they're going to move their way over towards the B site. This round is going to be very hard to win, though, for the side of St. Clair College. their spike is down all the way across the map. Yeah, this is <laughs> this may just end up being an aim duel simulator. There's not really much you can do, but I don't think they're aware of Kalos' lurk here. Yeah, Komodo is going down to Kalos, but Dean does get the trade, and now it's a 1v3. Can he do it? Probably not. The spike is down, so it's going to be hard for Dean, but nothing is impossible. The Paul just need to play with their patience. They don't need to get too aggressive in this round. There should be a lot, but let's see if something crazy can come out of Dean here. It will take a lot from him to bring this round for the Saints. Going to start the push through here. Has to check absolutely every single corner. The utility coming out from the Paul just makes it so much harder. Does spot out the spike. Will throw out a Stingray into that corner, but that gives away his position. And three members on all sides going to be watching that cross fires. Dean's going to go down. That's going to be the fourth round of the Paul. Going over to the Paul University. This is going to be the last 
round of the half. Four ultimates for the side of the Paul, only one for the side of the Saints. Yeah, not honestly, uh, not surprising that you didn't win that out. Yeah, pretty much an impossible situation. Not only do you have to deal with ramps, but also with the cross. Like, there's just no winning that. But, you know, despite that loss, they still have good money going into it for the last round of the half. It is pretty even now, you know, two light shields on uh, for DePaul and one for St. Clair, but it looks like they are going to start it out with an aggressive Gigawalt one for A for info, and yeah, so far he's not seeing anyone. This is this is huge info for Komodos. He's just lurking, gets that one onto Jet, that rips the Cypher ult, fighting a war in uh, in game, <laughs> fighting a war in game, but lose it, ultimately loses it out to come back up. But meanwhile, Saints have used that distraction to their advantage. They didn't end up making it to be. Cal's gonna find one though, but has no idea the storm is behind him. A nice shot there. 2v3 situation now for the Paul University. Spike is down, so only 40 seconds to work here now for the Paul. And we've seen Saints be so good post plan situation here. DVP though, a huge challenge here with Dean. Will find the swing from Dean, and that is a crucial kill now. You can see the ultimate does get popped by this Gecko, but just won't find anything with it. And that should be very, very. Good start for the Saints here in this retake. The Paul is gonna try and go for something miraculous here, but the team ace comes out from St. Clair's to take the first half, just like last map, eight to four. Yeah, I think honestly that, that lurk from Komodo is just staying back for as long as he could, you know, getting tucked behind that box, fighting as hard as he could. That was really influential. It was crucial for, you know, Saints that B hit to work and not. Maybe not for it to work, but for it to go as well as it did. Um, the effort from Komodos, it really... Yeah, it, like, it, it, could, it can't be understated. It's really good. Um, and honestly, yeah, eight rounds on attack split. That's really, really good. That's really great. Um, hopefully, Saints can uh, keep it up, keep their little... Yeah, keep their Saints, advantage. Yeah, as you said, that's very good. Eight rounds on attack is definitely something you'll take. But let's see if Saints can hold on on the defensive side. I think it's going to be very important of what happens on this first pistol round. It's going to be a B push coming out from the side of DePaul, but it's greatly read by the side of the Saints. They throw out that flash, get a lot of intel, and let's see what push comes through. This Lakaru flash is going to be absolutely massive. He's going to be able to find a, at least two or three members here. The dash in, though, comes what through from the side of DePaul. DP is going to be able to get Lakaru first. The plan's coming out from Cape Back, but Storm's going to be able to find one. D finds one. DP finds the trade as shots coming out everywhere. Can't anyone find the kills? The Jamie is going to be able to find one. And the Sky is going to be able to find any. Jamie McTree finds second. DBP finds his third of the round. And just like that, Saints drop like flies DePaul with a blink of an eye take that pistol round. Yeah, DePaul is kind of keeping it on brand. I think they really, as, as they showed us last month, they thrive in chaos. They thrive on those fast hits, those maybe sometimes scrappy gunfights, and it's okay. Not every gunfight has to be like, you know, perfect one tap headshot. Sometimes you just gotta spray and it gets the job done. Um, this eco round is gonna be huge. If Saints can thrifty here, I don't know, they may just take the map, but it is gonna be difficult just because uh, DePaul has that gun advantage. They have the SMGs. Maybe they will go for another fast hit, but Spectre is gonna get that info just off the bat. And this should be a fast hit from the Paul from the look of things, but they're actually gonna choose to slow it down a little bit and gonna look towards mid maybe. They're gonna opt to not go towards that B site very, very early on as they're gonna start to make their way towards the middle side of the map, maybe even all the way towards A side, but I believe if, uh, if they play this right, they could get it over two towards that B heaven, but what a great flank from Commodus here. We'll be able to find one and picks up a weapon for himself. Let's see how much more he can do done on this flank. He's going to choose to play for his life. A beautiful flank there as the Saints start this round perfectly. Perfect, yeah, honestly, great flank. That is like peak Cypher gameplay. You just walk around slowly, you lurk and you rat, and you get classic red kick kills, and that's it. You, you play your role. DePaul seeming a bit stuck in mid. I think they're just kind of waiting for something to happen, but you know, ultimately they control the pace of the game. So they are going to take that B heaven control. Storm is obviously here in that. I like the use of the rope here, like, you know, just hiding in the smoke. 30 seconds. And uh, unfortunately, he does go down to Kibako, but Spectre trades him out. Kibako again trades out his teammate. Komodos is on that flank. Jerry McCherry is aware of the Viper flank, ends up taking down Dean. Komodos is onto him, he has 12 HP, he ends up getting the kill onto Kepako somehow, and now it's on the Kairu of the Classic. Oh, 
Great position uh -oh. from Lakaru, but Jerry McCherry with the clutch, able to find three that round, and that was almost a thrifty for St. Clair, but even getting four members is so, so crucial. You can see, let's have the Paul University now have to make a crucial decision. Do they force up this buy, or do they kind of concede as St. Clair? Going to be able to get up those full buys, but I think this round is the most crucial one we've had in this map so far. Yeah, totally. But uh, just based off of the, uh, the weapon loadouts, I think that Saints will come out on top. <laughs> But who knows, you know, they did they did almost they almost thrifted. I the fact that they've kept it, you know, this close for this long, I feel like anything is possible. And they are just gonna Depali is gonna just eventually full send it onto A with all of the team being in that A main. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a full-on rush here from the Paul Dean. Spots out everybody and will be able to survive with his life, but getting all that information is beautifully done from him. As it's going to be Paul just sprinting onto the site. No kills from either side yet as DVP in a very dangerous position. Will get sprayed through the wall there, but will be able to survive. We'll find one on the swing. The trade comes out from Dean, though, but a crucial trade there coming out from both members as Kalos finds the trade. 3v3 situation, Dean. Goes around the corner, we'll be able to pick up Plotimus now. 3v2 situation for the side of St. Clair as Kales is also 1 HP, but they still have this utility on this side. Jerry McCherry will fall, and that should wrap it up. That nade from Storm could pick it up. Do they have any idea if Kales is in this corner? Yes, they do. Storm will find that one as St. Clair College will take a 9 6 lead. Mm -hmm. You know, eco frags are the best kind of frags. I like the attempt from DePaul, though. Um, I know last time I saw them on an eco, they kind of were a little more spread out. But this time, yeah, I feel like they went about it better. They uh, used that sort of like collective, uh, collective strength, you know, that very much apes together strong mentality, um, which is how you want to go on ecos usually. And this time, they are going to have that, uh, that, that full buy. And they, it, it is pretty even with things right now, so. Again, another even round, nothing we're not used to. You know, this has been a pretty even series. But they are going to keep the same star from last time. They're going to go for a, you know, full-on A hit. You know, they don't expect it twice. Yeah, hopefully, for the side of the Saints, though, they'll be ready for it. But the ball have to go quickly here. Like, there's nobody on the side of, on the A side from the side of the Saints. And it looks like the ball are going to recognize that. They're going to try and make their way into this A side quickly as the rest of the Saints will be forced to rotate over DUP. Careful for the Cypher Trap will destroy that one as it's going to be the fall on this side with relative ease. The plan will be getting put it down by that Gecko. And as the trade comes out from the EP, Storm's able to find one. Potomus finds a huge kill onto command as the trade though. Look out from Dean who finds two wow. through the smoke. Great shots from Dean there will give the Saints the advantage here in a 3v2. But the plant is down. St. Clair are on a timer. This dog won't be able to spot out the UP in this position. And that is crucial here. If he can just come up here and find the flank here, Spectre won't see it coming. Nice shots from Jerry McCherry. DUP will find that flank on the Spectre. Now to 1v2 for Lakeru, who has to be very, very careful on the 1v2 here. Doesn't have too much time. Does tap it a couple times, but the Paul have all the time in the world to work with. They have the nade. They have the Astro utility. Using both of them at the same time will buy them enough time. There won't be enough time for the defuse. He will attempt to go for it, but he will get headshot by Jerry McCherry. A nice round from the Paul University as they kind of found a weakness from St. Clair and just rushed into that site. Yeah, for sure. He took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> also, that the position from DBP and Vents there, just him avoiding the, uh, was it a, what is it, the Sky Dog or the Gecko? The Sky Dog. The Sky Dog. Him avoiding the dog was, yeah, like that, that was huge. That huge flank gets, I think, two kills off of that. Also, um, the Astra just winning her fight, also very good because, um, yeah, you know, <laughs> you, you gotta win the 1v1s. Um, the essence of Valorant is 1v1s, but we're going for the third full A hit in a row. And, and I don't know if... My counter is destroyed. What is? Yeah, I didn't... He was ready. Um, <laughs> this is on to Dean now. He is going to just back up, kind of wait for his team play retake. But it looks like Saints are going to take mid in response. And they were just someone on that flank. Windbang is going to get that flank. Kepako ends up taking Dean down in the meantime. But Storm is on that flank. But I think Jeremy Cherry is aware. Yeah, he's aware. It does spot him out and does find the shot, but Storm only having the judge here. This is going to be a hard one to win, but wins it out in the end. Spectre takes down DP. Kahlo is going to find the trade there. Look here in a very dangerous position there. Will go down. It's going to be able to Storm here on 30 HP on the flank. Let's see how he decides to play the 1v3. Could even choose to go for the save, but I think at this point in the game, he will just choose to play the 
out tree frags, maybe take a couple of weapons of the Paul out of the game here. But the Paul know exactly where he is. They're gonna choose not to go anywhere near Storm. They're gonna play their lives. Another clean round from the Paul University as they come within one round of the Saints. For sure, I think the Paul have really found their uh, their strength in this game is a hits. So far, Saints have not been able to make that sort of adaptation. They haven't. They've still been sending majority of their players towards B, which is understandable. I'd, I wouldn't expect a five-man A hit three times in a row either. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that DePaul are really starting to, um, what's the word? Like, um, like I guess, find themselves, yeah. find their strengths. Um, and maybe, you know, sometimes in collegiate, when, when people face off against St. Clair, I've, uh, I know if I was facing against St. Clair, I would be nervous because, you know, Saints are good. But... I think that in this case with DePaul, they haven't really let that get to them. They've just kind of treated it like every other game, and it's it's working out well for them. They're keeping it tight, and they're keeping it close, and they're keeping it very entertaining. Yeah, I mean, now they've come within one round. We've seen last map, they were down early 8-4 uh, as well, and then the second half of the game, they really turned things around, and it looks like they're on pace to do the same thing in Saints. Going to have to put a stop to that. Last time they... they opted for the timeout. They will come out the next round firing, took that one. So I'm wondering what the Saints are going to be doing here. But as you said, the Paul on this attacking side have just found everything they could ever want. DBP, definitely a big a part of that. 19 and 13 on that race, having an amazing map for themselves. And it looks like, yet again, the Paul are going to be going for that A push. Yeah, for sure. I was going to say, what do you think, um, who do you think is going to win this out in the end? <laughs> in the end? Well, you know, I want to say Saints, but history might repeat itself. The Paul really pick it up towards this later part of the match. Let's see who takes this round. I think might be victorious, but Storm wants to take this one early. That's going to be a pick coming out from Lakero, but Storm going a little bit too deep there. And will go down. Kalos is going to be able to find the second. And the Paul going to get the early advantage. So they're going to back out of this site, use their man advantage, and probably rotate all the way over to B. Probably. Honestly, unlucky that Rosa was unlucky from Storm. Yeah. It was a good adaptation, you know, they know, oh, they're, they're five men hitting A, they've, they've done that three times now, and so, like, on paper, uh, Razel is, like, the perfect counter to that, but it's, on, it, I think it came down to positioning, I know Killjoy was tucked in that corner, so, yeah, sometimes that's just how the game goes, you know, you, you make a plan and it, it doesn't go, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't work, but that's okay, um, they are, trying to adapt anyway, DePaul is going to get over onto that B site. It is since weaker site, Viper is just watching that mid, but I think she's, you yeah, Dean suspects it. that, you know, somebody is, you know, something is wrong, uh, and that ult will just kind of confirm it as DePaul is right now. Left. Yeah, the plant is down, now Saints are on a shot clock, and that Astro ult is going to be so, so important for these early stages, as all members from the Paul University are going to be tucked away in that back corner. Nobody playing on that side. You can see how aggressive Saints are with that smoke. Gonna be able to make up a lot of ground here. They're gonna try and get on that defuse, but the raise going up mid is gonna be a crucial flank there. If the ball can just hold the ground a little bit, the Kairos gonna look to take that defuse. There's gonna be a shot coming out from Kylo. Gonna be gonna find four. He's looking for the eight. K oh, Pack wow. was gonna take that one away, but St. Clair College couldn't find the clutch there. The Paul University when it matters most, came out on top, and they tie this map up at 9-9 apiece. Honestly, every time I've seen, I've expected, I've seen the Killjoy, the Kalos, they just have, like, really, really good positioning. I know last round they were just tucked in that corner. Maybe they were expecting the Razel, which, yeah, you know, good adaptation. And with this round, they prob most likely a positioning thing, you know, or, and, or like a movement thing where they were just able to kind of bob and weave around B main and get those four kills, almost ace, unfortunately was stolen by that gecko. But I think DePaul really starting to feel themselves as they go for another five man A hit. And they're gonna have that sky flash to let them know that DePaul are pushing it, but they don't have the weapons to really compete here, Saints, because they've lost a couple rounds in a row here now. Let's see, it's gonna be, it's gonna be very, very aggressive, but the trades will come out from DePaul using their gun advantage storm. Gonna block three, they'll find the pick onto DP, and now it's a 3v3 scenario. Very, very winnable for the Saints here now. All members from DePaul on this side. Some lower HP bars for the side of the Saints, but they have this Cypher ultimate, which is gonna be massive. The shots come out here from Kalos. Nice shot from there, but Storm finds the trade. 2v2 scenario, and they know exactly where they are. Cover's just gonna walk through here, and here's gonna be a huge Gecko ultimate. We'll find it onto one, and they're gonna be able to pick up Storm as the Gecko ult has 
contain Commodus, and that's going to be another round going over to the Paul University. Getting a bit of deja vu from last game as now they took a 10 9 lead. For sure. Yeah, no, as I said, DePaul is really feeling themselves. I love seeing the impact that the Gecko has. I know I talked earlier about how. Um, the ult, the Gecko ult was really good for this map, and that kind of just shows why all these tight corners, um, not very like wide open spaces, it's really, it's like kind of the ideal scenario if you're playing Gecko, and it kind of just proved it in that last round, you know, that's, that uh, detainment onto the Cypher was, was kind of crucial. Um, yeah, I don't know, the ball are just, they're, they're fine, they're chilling, they're just going A over and over again, they know it works. Um, and they're also making good adaptations too. They're not just running into ramps because they know yeah. Saints do like to play on that ramp. But yeah, they are just going to slow it down for now. Yeah, I mean, I think they have a sneaking suspicion that Storm might be sitting up here with that yeah. operator. But still, it looks like the Paul are still going to be pushing into this B site. Let's see how they decide to play this one. No, playing it very, very slowly, waiting for Saints to make a mistake. But no mistake will be made just yet. And nobody. Flanking as well from the side of the Saints. I think that's what the Paul are kind of waiting for. Yeah, but Saints holding their ground. Perfect defense from them so far. Storm gonna have to find a pick here with this Arpator. Will find one very, very early on. On to Kalos. We'll go for the re pick. Won't be able to find the second shot there. But that's a huge pick. Taking down that Killjoy early into the round. It's gonna be the Paul rotating over to mid as they look to make a play happen here. Totally. But I think that Komodos knows. He's just sort of. Yeah, just watching over that mid. Oh, is he gonna get a timing? Not exactly. But he may just have to take a 1v1 here. This may, him living or dying is crucial. And he is gonna choose to... Yeah, just stand in front of the cage, all right? Off of that. Oh, Potom is going in, ripping those blades. But he doesn't clear Commodus, and he does end up getting that one pick. He's traded out by Kapako, but this is the retake for the Saints. Dean, same thing, swings, gets one, gets traded. Spectre gives Astra a kiss, and... and that's it, they win their Spain's win their round. Beautiful round from the Saints. Uh, Paul just not checking a couple of corners there was crucial to their demise, but now it's a 10 10 game. Four buys are going to be online for the Paul, but Saints, on the other hand, won't be able to, to afford such luxury. Only three members will be able to buy a, a rifle, but Storm having that operator could be a crucial, crucial reason to why they win this round. But it looks like the Paul, yet again, Setting up for a B push, and this time Storm isn't there with the Operator, so this could spell disaster for Side of the Saints. Just matters how quickly the Paul University decides to act. There's going to be a tag on to Spectre there. That should give Saints a bit of uh, knowledge of what the Paul want to do with the Killjoy Ultimate. Will confirm their suspicion. Spectre, going to look for an early swing here, won't find much on that one. As the Paro's in a dangerous position it? here, has to get out of danger here on that Omen. Those, it's going to be able to TP out, I believe. Will not get detained. The plant comes up from K Paco from that Gecko. And it's a full on 5v5 plant going down. Retake. Going to have to be beautiful here from the Saints. That Astral is nearly perfect and gives them so much space to work with. Honestly, but I don't know if Potamus is going to clear out heaven here. I don't. Yeah, so far no one's where Potamus does end up getting another kill. Is traded by Storm with that off. Oh. Storm just flicking onto the, onto the other. I don't think he knows when it's hell. He does it. He saw, but he's still going anyway. He's just letting that rocket fly. He's gonna get his third on the round. He knows where Astra is. He is, has 7 HP, but it is on to Astra to get this uh, try to I guess. Or, sorry, on to Storm to win the round for his team. Unfortunately, it's not gonna happen. Kay Kalos is going to close out the round with a 3k of his own. Storm did all he could to take that one down for the Saints, but just could not do much more than that. It's going to be a beautiful round from the Paul. They invested a lot into that round. They used the Killjoy ultimate, they used the Astro ultimate, and they made sure that they won that round. A great round from them, and finally, looks like the Paul University will make their way over towards that B side of Saints. Looks like there's three sacking that A site. Yeah, and I don't blame them. They are on another eco. I was going to say the, the ult use this last one was just crucial. I love the Killjoy ult and the Astro ult. It was honestly just perfect to set them up for the win. DePaul is going to start that slow walk contact up onto B main. And yeah. Komodos is just chilling, just on his camera. He's going to see, it, I think, at least two or three. And if he could get one here, that would, that would be enough. But we will see how it goes. Yep, is it going to end up getting that kill onto DB50? But Kepako and Potamus are going to get kills of their own. Spectre getting that frenzy shot. They're just trading kills back and forth. Jerry McCherry getting that kill onto Dean. And now it is a 2v2. 2v2. So many shots go down so early. And Saints, you know, not having that full by 
still a great start this round for them. The flash will come out. Spectre's gonna have to want to pick up that Phantom and will do so. Almost finds the shot there onto that Killjoy, but Kalos will be able to make it out with their lives. This has to run away around the corner here. Spectre able to find one tag but won't find the kill as it's so much chaos going on. Let's see how each team decides to play this 2v2 scenario. Oh my goodness. They're not gonna be able to spot out anybody as the double swing will come through. Kalos finds one. Will be able to stay alive for a bit of a longer as the fair finds that kill. But Jerry McCherry comes through with the trade as DePaul University put themselves Match on match point. point. Honestly, I think the, at this point DePaul kind of have Saints number. Another thing I noticed, DePaul, they really love their crossfires and I can't blame them. I think I've seen them set up like at least five crossfires so far. And it's it's worked I think almost every single time. Like they, they know, they're kind of, they're really understanding how, you know, Saints are working the map and how to play around it. And it's, it's really impressive considering, you know, the league that they're in and just the fact that, you know, it's been a closed game and they're still managing to make these reads and have not just make the reads, but have success on them as well. The Storm is going to find that opening pick on the DB50. Hippotamus is going to trade him out. Yeah, but it's Lacaro finding three on the round on that omen. It's going to be all she rolled for the side of the Paul University yet again. Some big clutch plays at the 12-10 mark for the Saints to bring themselves within one round of that overtime. But it's going to be four buys coming out from both sides. Potamus actually only has 14.50, so won't be able to buy up too much. And DP, uh, DPP also will only have that Guardian. But for the side of the Saints, they have a couple ultimates. They have the four buys and Viper one kill away from her ultimate. Could be massive for the side of the Paul University. Only that get cool to it. For sure, and it looks like they're going to the good old fashioned. The D I'm going to start calling these the DePaul A hits every time I play ranked now. I am a little bit worried just for DePaul based on, you know, Potamus and, and their Stinger. Um, they could try to go for the old orbs, obviously, for the knives, but it, it just depends on how proactive Saints want to get. And speaking of being proactive, Storm is just holding that A line. So far, has. But. Potom or sorry, Potamus. <laughs> DePaul University showing very good discipline, very good restraint. Just waiting and waiting and letting oh, yeah. the defense get kind of antsy and come to them, letting that get the wall rip. Get the wall gets taken out immediately, but Storm gets hit by that flash. Will get taken down. The Kira finds one, but does get traded out. Spectre finding the trade there. 3 3 scenario here now. It looks like DePaul will get a bit of control here, but Jeremy Chow oh, finds. Huge. The huge lurk onto Commodus here, and it looks like the ball should maybe rotate over towards that B side. That's exactly what they're gonna do. As that Ash is gonna get up into that spawn, and Dean is running without his weapon, will get taken down. The lurk from Jerry McCherry this round might have wrapped this one out for the Paul University. They're gonna get the plant down in the 3v1 scenario. Spectre has no ultimate. This is gonna be a really hard one to retake for sure. And now Potamus has a, a, a rifle and knives, so this 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 may be wraps. This may be uh, this may be curtains. You know, if Spectre wins this, I will dye my hair. That's I'm just putting that out there. I'm gonna dye my hair some crazy color and I'm gonna come to some come to school and I'm, everyone's gonna see it. But Spectre is gonna start that retake on on their own. Taps the bomb, kind of expecting a swing. So far nothing. So far nothing. And nobody nobody from the side of the pond needs to peek. They have all the utility in the world they need. And it's going to be DBP finding the final kill of the series. DePaul University going to be taking this map 13-11 and taking the series 2-0. But the scoreline doesn't say everything. Both maps finishing 13-11, 13-11 for DePaul University. They're going to move up to 4-3 and three on the season as our Saints drop to 4-3 and three on the season as well. So things are going to be very competitive at the top with that leaderboard. For sure. I... That game, this I like that game a lot. I like watching it. It was very fun. I loved seeing the uh, the gecko come out, and I I loved seeing the um, just the in general the double duelist from DePaul was really good. I was I was kind of hesitant at first on you know how effective it would be considering the double smokes and all of the like, potential for the stall, but it ended up working out in their favor. And you know I think I said earlier you might as well just play to your strengths anyways, right? Instead of um, something that you're not comfortable with. But yeah, luckily overall, it was a good try from Saints as well. Um, close game, they tried their best. It was, honestly, it, sometimes it was just down to the wire. It came down to, you know, maybe maybe one lost gunfight or, or one, you know, missed, missed shot or whatever. Yeah. But overall, it was a good effort. I mean, if you look at the scoreboard, you could see how close it really was. Kills everybody between that 20 and 17 range. Potamus at the bottom with that jet, but 
didn't really matter for the side of the Paul as they were able to close that one out. A beautiful team play from both sides, but the Paul just playing that tiny bit better on the day. And they're going to be taking this 2 0 victory over St. Clair College. Playoffs starting soon, if not next week, the week after. And, you know, both teams look like they're in great, great form. Yeah, yeah, so sure. it's going to be fun to watch both these teams in playoffs. Yeah, honestly, um, I haven't seen a close uh, a close Saints game in a bit. And I think that just based off of these games, the fact that both of these teams were able to like put up such a fight and, yeah, just keep things close the entire time, I think it really, it, it, it's a testament to, like, their skill and just, you know, how bad they they want the win, you know, and, and in the end, like only one team can win. Yeah. But just the fact that both of these games were so close, it it kind of shows, like, yeah, like these guys, they they know what they're doing. They're they're trying their hardest, and um, I think overall, it's like a, it's a good experience for uh, I guess everyone involved. You know, it's 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 fun for us to cast. It's fun for them to play, and yeah, I don't know. Overall, it was it was good. It was good. Yeah, I mean. It was a very, very good series. Congratulations to the Paul University to getting the victory. But that's going to be wrapping it up for us today. Thank you to uh, our sponsor. We have Tim Hortons, HyperX Subway, St. Clair Alumni Association, and the St. Clair SRC. Thank you to everyone in the back who made this broadcast possible. We have, I know we have Daniel back there. I think we have Tommy on the... On uh, observing. TJ, yeah, and we have TJ in the back as well. So thank you to you guys. Uh, Make sure to follow all of our social medias to not fall, to not miss any Saints action. We have Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. We upload daily, so go there to not miss anything. Uh, and tomorrow we have an exciting game day for you guys, starting at 7 p.m. We have League of Legends, Fortnite, and TFT. So it's gonna be action packed. I've been your host. The only one the Holy Juan, joined by Ari. It's been a very fun cast today. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll be seeing you guys tomorrow.